What we're actually being asked to do is shut down. When you shut down, you are freezing your ability to make any money, yet you still owe all your bills. Do we not need something more than that, like a, like a national economic holiday? We are, we are certainly going to need that. And I think we're, many of us are talking. In fact, we're on a call with Democrats and Republicans yesterday just about this. What can we do to help those small and medium-sized businesses in particular? What do we do about all those hourly workers who aren't going to be getting a paycheck? How do we help enhance unemployment benefits to make sure that they have resources to get through this? And of course, on the other side, how do we make sure, whether it's companies in tourism, but the bars, the restaurants, how do they all stay in business and, and keep people employed? And I think that's going to be our biggest challenge. How do you figure out when a bailout makes sense? And I think about the tourism industry. We understood the bailout in 2008 because banks fuel the U.S. economy. You need them. There's real systemic risk here. But the cruise industry, the hotel industry, the restaurant industry, when many this weekend defied what health experts said to do and still had cruises leaving, had pool parties at hotels, should they be getting tax dollars when they're not using best practices? I think they've got to use best practices. And if they've got to follow, you've, and to your point is really important, there wasn't a structural problem of the economy. This is an external event happening to the economy. So very different than 2008. But what's not different is you're going to have massive effect on jobs and businesses. And, and it's not just the airlines that are going to be affected, but it's everyone around the airline, the stores right at the airports. It's, it's, it's the, the drivers who get you to the airport. It's everybody. So we're going to really have to think about that. And we want people, if they're not feeling well, to stay home. But also, even if you're not feeling well, you've got to be safe and smart. And in my district, we've self-quarantined one community because we've had a significant number. So it's hurt a lot of our businesses. It's the, it's a step we have to take, but we can't leave our businesses out in the cold. But what is we've got to think about this look like? Does it mean cutting a check to every single American? Because there's lots of people who aren't getting fired, but they're just getting their shifts cut. Or maybe that small business owner gets a loan, but it doesn't mean that loan is making its way to the employees. Well, you, I think you're going to have to do something to help those small business owners, and it may be a, a zero interest loan with payback, but they got to keep their, they're going to have okay, to keep right their there. employees employed. So, so right? will that, will there be a caveat? You can have a zero interest loan, but you must keep your employees full time. I, I'll think so. I think you're going to have to keep your employees in some sort of way. And those who are hourly workers or gig workers, what we're going to have to do there, I believe, is actually some super enhanced unemployment benefit, right? To help them survive this, to make sure that they have the resources to, to take care of their families. But also, Stephanie, to your point, in the short term, we have to make sure that everybody is doing everything safe to keep the spread of this down. And that, that is first and foremost has to be on our minds as well. So that means if you're not feeling well, you don't, to your point, you don't go to work. And you make sure that you, you and in TNEC where they've now shut all these stores, it means that we've got to take care of these small businesses, but also people have to stay home. They can't go to big groups. As the CDC said last night, we've got to stop the spread. We've got 100 cases in New Jersey, a third in my district. And I'm telling you, I spoke to the hospitals yesterday. They're short on supplies, and they've got people coming in and more people coming in. Okay. I was born in Teaneck, New Jersey. Help us understand the tax on hospitals right Ain't. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. There you go. It's a great hospital. <laughs> um, what's that question? <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Hospital workers. Yeah. Right? You need to be fully staffed. So we're worried about Very more worried. and more people going to the hospital. But at the same time, as soon as they do, that quarantines 40 hospital employees at a clip. Well, the hospitals, including Holy Name, and I was on, we saw them yesterday, they're all taking significant precautions, right, to keep, their, to keep the frontline health care workers from getting but exposed. But we already had a nursing yes, they're, shortage. But they're quarantining a significant number. No, this is a huge problem. One, one making sure that we have enough frontline health care workers, doctors, technicians, nurses, who are on the front lines. And then think about this. Where do their kids go? We have to make sure that their kids, right, are not in school, child care for their children so they can get to work. This is so important. It's why, actually, the fact that we declared a national emergency is essential. You've got yesterday, talk, the vice president talked about this. There are FEMA, there are special uh, doctors and nurses that we're able to dispatch to communities. We're going to have to do that because we're going to have shortages. So we have to think through all these different pieces. It's a ripple effect. OK, what Congress decided upon Friday night, uh, Congress, Nancy Pelosi, C. Mnuchin, yeah. is the Senate going to pass this? Yes, I, I think they're going to pass this without delay. Why do you think that? A, there was a, a, a deal worked out before we got mm -hmm. there. It's part of why it took a few days, right, to make sure that we worked all the pieces out. The president indicated he'll sign it, so I think, obviously, that's quite important. This will get done, and it'll get done fast. But to your point, 
It's now we have to think through, and many of us are already doing this, Democrats and Republicans, how we come together to think about the next phase of this, because there's going to be a next phase. This is a time where we must come together 100%. as a country. And that's what you saw happen, and we have to keep that together. Now, we'll, we'll worry about blaming later. Now we've got to solve a problem.